Hi, uh, my name is Anthony Gibbs, and today I'd like to make an editorial or response, an editorial response to uh, many of the conspiracy types, the war with the order, you know, the devotees, other uh, YouTubers who have uh, posted uh, numerous videos and such you know, on this matter. And I've sat down and I've watched a lot of these uh, videos. Uh, many of Alex Jones videos. I, I sat down and I watched uh, many of the Black Child's videos and uh, Mark Dice and uh, many other of these videos. And it seems to me that there are uh, common themes that are in and I'll point some of them out. It seems that some of these common themes are an overall construct that is designed to hold a person down. Uh, an active conspiracy by a few to, to influence and or rule indirectly many others. This notion of these are secret societies and cabals that kind of push things. Now, it's true that uh, throughout history, there are many instances where you have conspiracies of a few that have like you know, large scale effects. You know, one can look at the history between stupid film, sorry. One can look at the history between, you know, Caesar and his conspirators, how a few of the, the, patrician, the, 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 the uh, patrician families you know, they decided that Caesar kind of had to go. And a few of them got together and they sent Caesar along his way. Um, well, we had people conspire to assassinate as a president case of John Wilkes Booth from the Exit Golden Circle. So yes, you know, conspiracies, you know, and they are real, and they do happen. However, many other factors have to come together for these things to kind of, you know, coalesce. For these men to, you know, to kind of, you know, consolidate uh, their power. At some point, there has to either be we are we agree with these men or we have been forced uh, by these men and it seems many of these conspiracy types are, are leading towards forced by these men I guess my point of uh, refutation is this, in all of these things, so with the uh, New World Order and the conspiracies and the economy and those kind of things, and how, you know, like, like the gold, uh, getting off the gold standard, you know, Jekyll Island, whatever. Uh, like the media having some type of control over us, whatever. Here's my response to that. Invariably, it is upon us and us alone. These people, these bastards, these industrialists, these uh, robber barons are only in power and they're only wealthy because we have agreed with them and their paradigm. There is no grand conspiracy to control anyone. You know, what a real conspiracy lies is that we keep making these choices over and over again to consume their crap. And that's it. We have to we have to accept that.
we have choice in the market. We don't have to, but people want to, and then when they do so, they're upset with the results. You don't have to have cable television. You don't have to have a new car. You don't have to go on vacation every three months. You don't have to have a credit card. I haven't used a credit card since 1996. Real talk, I have not. So, one could make those choices. It's just that we have chosen to indulge in all the extras to the point of where the extras have become the new American dream. It used to be a manifest destiny, you know, where you went out to find your place in the West, or you went out and you carved your place out in the sun. When you showed up and all you had was clothes in your back and ten dollars, maybe, and a dream. Now all of a sudden, it's become to own and consume is the American dream, is your manifest destiny. What I call it is the consumerist manifest destiny. The manifest destiny of if I don't have the vehicle I want and the toys I desire and the services and subscriptions that I wish to indulge in, then I'm not doing good. I'm not doing well. I'm not experiencing the American dream. And the, go and the drive to go out and uh, get these things is why these folks are rich and we seemingly don't have anything. Now, of course, you have factors of uh, pay, factors of equity, where the budget is spent on the rest of this stuff. But with all that being you factored in, it still remains that consumerist choices is what drives the economy, is what makes these folks rich. If you're talking about a transfer of wealth, stop buying extras. Stop going out and have fast food. Go to the store and get your ingredients and cook them from scratch. As much as you can. You consider, do you need new clothes every three or four months? You consider, do you need to go on that vacation every three months? You consider, do you need to put a credit card out and hit that mall every week? Or hit Amazon up. Whatever it is that you like to spend the money on. Hey, look here. I'm not saying I'm perfect. I got bad habits too. I'm just merely taking time out to kind of ask myself these questions and ask you these questions. And the question is, why are these folks really rich? Why does the 1% have and we supposedly don't have anything? What does it mean to have the American dream? What is manifest destiny in the year 2015? You know, I want to conclude by saying, first of all, uh, thank you if you sat through this whole damn thing. I mean, I'm really appreciative of that. But I just want to conclude by saying, there is hope. There is light. When they truly win is when we have convinced ourselves that it is over. And our vote does mean nothing. When we're convinced of that, that's when they have indeed won. That's when the camps will open up and be herded into them like cattle. But now we have the time 
to stand up. And this starts with considering consumerist choices. If you conclude that there is no problem, and I'm just some um, radio dude who needs a damn shave and a haircut, running his full mouth, and disregard what I say, going with your life. Either way, I mean, I guess we'll go on. However, if you hear what I say at all, and perhaps the time is to stop blaming the man and to blame ourselves, consider what we're doing and change our behavior accordingly. Okay? One love.